All right. So let's say we have a lovely wire here, complete circuit, and it's got uh, in this lovely square loop, uh, current flowing clockwise. Cool. And this wire is going to be connected to this lovely rod here. We'll see the relevance of that in here in a little bit. So if we look at each section of the wire, we want to look at what direction is the force on that section of the wire in this lovely universal uniform, uh, I shouldn't say universal, but uniform uh, magnetic field pointing into the board. So if we look at the top segment of the wire, its current is pointing to the right. Magnetic field is directed into the board. Which way is the force? Straight up. Let's do that in blue. So it feels a force in the upward direction. Now we go to the right hand side of this lovely loop. So which way is the force? To the right. Cool. And the lower portion? Cool. Now it's down. And the portion on the left? Cool. To the left. And so what would be the net force operating on this lovely loop? So it'd be zero. The current is everywhere the same, and this part's going to cancel out this part, therefore, and this part's going to cancel out this part, and there's no net force operating on this lovely wire anywhere. Okay, so let's contrast that now. Contrast that now with a magnetic field directed to the right instead of into the board. So now, again, for this top part of the loop, which way does it feel a force? Good. It's parallel to the magnetic field. The current is, so there's no force felt whatsoever. Cool. This right-hand loop, which way does it feel the force? So uh, in this case, we got fingers pointing to the right, right? Thumb needs to point down, and so coming out. Okay, so there's a force out of the board, the bottom part of the loop. No force, and then this left-hand part. Cool, and again, magnetic field points to the right, thumb points up, and so force comes out your palm into the board. So what is the net force felt on this loop in this example? Still zero. Okay, cool. Now, though, let's pretend for a minute that this lovely wire is connected to a rod that's allowed to rotate. So using this kind of rod as the axis of rotation, a pivot point. So in this case, so if I kind of view this as my pivot point, so if I pull on something attached this side, it's going to cause it to want to rotate. And if I push on something on this side, it's going to want it to cause it to rotate the same direction. So, and in this case, you're applying a force, a distance away from the axis rotation. What are we doing here? Applying We're applying a torque. And so it turns out, so as long as the plane of your loop, so, and your magnetic field have some component that's parallel, are not perfectly perpendicular like we saw here, you'll get a net torque. There was no net torque here. All the forces were going to cancel, and they weren't going to be in a direction to actually generate any torque. But here, when they're perfectly parallel, that's when your torque is at a maximum. And so that's the next equation on your handout there. Torque on a current carrying loop here. Cool, by the way, this lovely equation in the last one you saw with BIL, depending on your textbook, you might see this differently. I don't know if you've seen this as ILB sine theta. So this one you might see as NIAB, same diff. The order doesn't matter. Not super important, but you will see it presented different ways. So in this case, B is your magnetic field. I is your current. A? A is the area of the loop. It doesn't have to be a square loop. It could be a circular loop or any shape loop, but you've got to be able to calculate its area. And then N, it doesn't have to be a single loop. It could be a loop of multiple turns, and every turn is going to double the effect. So, or at least increase it by that much more. So two turns 
would be twice as big a torque as one turn, four turns even twice as big as that, so on and so forth. So the number of turns factors in there as well. And again, if they're not perfectly parallel, then you're gonna have to factor that in as well with sine theta. Cool. Uh, one thing to note here, what is theta in this case? So, I mean, in terms of, I had to find it wrong on our sheet. So, but notice in this case, the plane of the loop, so, in your magnetic field, when they're in the same plane, that's when you're actually gonna get a value of a maximum. That's when this term should go away. So theta actually should be the angle between the perpendicular, uh, or how close your magnetic field is to the perpendicular of your loop. My bad on your sheet, it's a little, misdefined, I'll change that. So when it's when it's uh, perpendicular to the magnetic field. So yeah, when it's when these are parallel, that's when you get the maximum, and so that's when you need sine of ninety. And so the angle is not the angle is how far your magnetic magnetic field is from the perpendicular and we're ninety degrees away from that perpendicular to the loop. Cool? Cool, so this is the basis of a lot of motors. So I can get these lovely things to turn and turn and turn and turn and turn around and around and around and around they go. We have a problem though, because notice, let's do one full complete turn here. This is into the board and this is out of the board. It's gonna wanna rotate this way. After rotating 180 degrees, then which, where's the current going to point on this side now? It's pointing down and we'll just go around the horn here. So what's my problem? Yeah, now your torque's going to want to make it rotate exactly the opposite direction. So is this going to be helpful in getting a motor to work? No, because it'll do one, you know, 180 degrees rotation and then want to flip directions and stuff like that. Unless we can do what? change the direction of the current every 180 degrees. Because if I change all of a sudden the direction of the current, then the torque will be back into the same direction it was initially, and stuff like this. And they have a variety of ways of doing this. One way is simply with an alternating current uh, setup instead of direct current. Alternating current alternates so many times per second anyways, and if you match your motor to that, you're set. So, but with direct current, they get some crazy ways in which this lovely system of wires is hooked up to something with a gap and every 180 degrees it turns, it actually connects the wires in the opposite polarity so that it just reverses the current every 180 degrees. So, but cool, kind of the basis of a lot of our electric motors.